telling stories of epic adventure, ridding the land of ancient evil. These things are good and fine when you're playing D&D with kids. But you know what else is cool? Magic items, treasure, gold pieces, and spending that gold on new gear. But keeping track of all that sweet, sweet loot can be kind of tedious, especially if you start talking about rules like encumbrance. So how do we make inventory management fun? Well, to find out, I'm going to go ahead and give you advantage on your Save versus Justin. Of course, I'm half joking, right? Kids aren't only interested in treasure, right? They want to explore. They want to battle. They want to do cool things. But at my table, they do want to get paid for it. Video games have already tackled this, of course. If you played games like Skyrim, you know there's stuff lying around all over the place, and it's easy to pick it up and throw it in your backpack without really paying attention to what you're doing. Pretty soon, you're carrying around three suits of armor, five shovels, and a broom for some reason. Eventually, it slows you down, but you have to turn on that hard mode for weight to actually start to matter. D&D recognizes this silliness and tries to fix it with math. Encumbrance rules. Basically, just adding up a bunch of weight values and comparing that with how much you can carry based on your strength stat. Which makes sense for the most part, there's nothing wrong with that. But to me, it's just not very inspiring. And if I did that with my group, things would be thrown at me. Probably D4s. Most of the time, this is not a problem. The GM and the player can usually do a reality check on the fly and work out what makes sense to carry. At the same time, managing your resources a bit more closely could add some tension and interesting choices to your game. What's more valuable in the Underdark? That jewel-encrusted chalice or your lantern? The answer, of course, is dark vision. But you can see where I'm going with this. Not limiting what you can carry can actually take something fun away from the game. So is there a way we can abstract this a bit, simplify it, but still give players a friendly reminder when they're carrying too many brooms? Some of you may have backed the recent Kickstarter for the Shadow Dark RPG system. I did, and one of the cool concepts that sold me was the idea of tracking your inventory with gear slots. Basically, your strength stat is the number of items you can carry with a minimum of 10. Some items might take up more than one slot, or you might be able to group multiple items together into one slot, like arrows, but no real math, just filling in the slots. This is the quick start rules, which I'll provide a link to, available for free. There's a great Questing Beast video on this too, where he talks about some older games that use similar mechanics. He goes deep into this, and it's really well done. I'll provide a link to that as well. Gear slots are cool, but what if we want to make that a more visual and tactile experience? Here's what we've been doing at our table. Each character has two of these card holder sheets that represents their inventory. One is for what you're wearing or carrying on your belt, and the other is for what's in your backpack. Most of the items the party finds or carries are represented by one of these item cards. We use these like gear slots, nine pockets, so nine slots per sheet, with one item card per slot. Once these sheets fill up, you have to start making choices on what to bring and what to leave behind. In our campaigns, the party might also have a pack mule or sidekick who can help carry extra stuff. They get their own sheet of cards that they carry. In fact, I found that it can actually be a pretty useful mechanic to have something that represents shared party loot or gear that isn't owned by one character, especially with kids. The cards I use were published by Paizo as part of their Game Mastery line of RPG accessories. I went to look for them recently, and it looks like they may have replaced those with their Pathfinder item cards. The difference being that the new set has Pathfinder rules for use on the back instead of a blank space for notes. I'll include a link to them, but I haven't tried them out yet. I did notice that Paizo's online store does still have some Game Mastery item cards in their warehouse. I also saw another set of item cards published by a company called Stratagem. I haven't used those either, but they look pretty close as well. Wizards of the Coast did something similar when they published their deck of magic item cards, featuring items and art from the Dungeon Master's Guide. Most of them have an illustration on one side, with an item description and rules for use on the back. Sometimes they might use more generic art for things like potions, or when no art was used for that item in the DMG. Of course, you're probably not going to have a card for everything your characters are going to want to carry around with them. In fact, maybe it's more fun to have your characters create their own item cards on the fly using a blank card like one of these. A deck of these cards actually comes with a spellbook card holder I showed in my last video on simplifying character sheets. Oh, and as items get used up, don't throw them away. It's kind of fun to add them to a mini art gallery that turns into a great souvenir of your campaign. I love using these cards, but there's another approach to simplifying inventory I saw in a role-playing game I backed years ago on Kickstarter called Storm Hollow. It's another great game geared at introducing role-playing to younger players. Their approach to managing your character's gear is to use cards as well, but instead of one card per item, they have a card that represents a kit or bundle of gear, kind of specialized to your character's role or class. This is very similar to the concept of equipment packs in 5th edition D&D. In Storm Hollow, your character starts off with one of these kit cards, and any additional magic items or unique gear you might pick up are tracked as separate cards, similar to the ones published by Wizards. 
Alternatively, Storm Hollow also provides blank cards for you to create your own gear kits using the sticker sheet, which is genius. Unfortunately, I think Storm Hollow is pretty hard to find these days. There might be copies available on eBay, but it would be pretty expensive if you were trying to track it down just to use the inventory cards. That said, through the magic of Google, I was able to track down several artists on a site called Redbubble who offer similar item sticker sets. Redbubble is just one of those sites where you can upload your art and have it printed out on all kinds of stuff, including stickers. There's a ton of other sites out there like this, and I'm sure I'll be spending too much time diving down this particular rabbit hole. There should be a term for a Google rabbit hole. I don't think any of these item sets are as complete as the sets in Storm Hollow, but you can see where it might be a fun activity to combine stickers and doodles on a 3x5 card to create your own custom inventory sets. What else can we think about bumping off our character sheet and onto the table as a more visual and tactile experience? I have some ideas, and I'm sure you do too. Our quest continues in the next video. Until then, please do that thing with all the clicking, tapping, or smashing to help spread the word, and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you.